And I, I don't remember when Mick came into my life. I just know that Mick, Napa is Mick, Mick is Napa. I, I really don't remember how I met him, but Mick was always there. And um, I was thinking today, what a wonderful thing it would be to have a, pol a political discussion with him today. <laughs> oh my goodness. But what he, would, what he would say to us, though, was stand together, be local, take care of yourselves, never mind those guys. Let's just love each other and move on and be community together. He would, he would say that. But I'm, I'm also remembering being very um, amazed. We probably bumped into each other at Trader Joe's or something, and he said, I've registered to vote somewhere else. I don't know if it was the next state because so-and-so is registering in this state because he can vote for this one and I can vote for that one because he wanted to influence whatever that election was. So he went and changed his party, I think, to do that. And I don't remember how long ago that was, but nothing's changed really, eh? Um, and I remember um, sitting around the dining room table at your house and discussing the next most wonderful idea and brainstorming about, you know, something marvelous. And Catherine walked in from work and, ah, oh, okay, here's another group at the table discussing again. It was like, oh, okay, it's another day. And we carried on discussing probably another hour or two. I think Catherine said, shouldn't we be having some dinner sometime, Mick? And I think that was our cue to sort of, all right, let's go now and <laughs> stop the discussion. Um, and then just lastly, the, um, the last time I spoke to Mick was not that long ago, uh, it was last year, because my younger daughter wanted to go to Cuba on her gap year. And we had no idea, really. We just knew that it was really hard to get to Cuba and you had to go to Mexico or however before the, the, the doors opened. So I phoned Mick. I said, Mick, how do you go to Cuba? And he not only... Uh, explained how one goes to Cuba, but he put my daughter in touch with a couple of people in Cuba. And the one lady had written a book. You probably know who she is. I don't. She's, she, she, she writes for um, Lonely Planet. And she's based there in Havana. And we actually did establish email connection, except that the connection on the Cuban side kept dying, and this conversation could never actually draw to a conclusion. We did catch a few words before her internet died, her web connection died, and it was, what does a young girl on her own want to do in Cuba by herself? It's kind of tough. So we kind of got that message. And then the other person, I think his name is Phil Ross. Uh, I don't know if you know him. Uh, Boogaloo Productions. Based in, uh, based in Havana, we'll take you around Cuba, we'll find you places to stay, we'll, we'll customize your trip to Cuba. Sebastopol address. So now you know why those two know each other. Um, and so I did actually email him uh, this last week uh, and sent him the obituary, which, did Mick write that? Ah. He took it from his, a lot of the information from in his, his website. Himself. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Ah, uh, there you go. It's it's from there. So I did send I did send the the obituary on to I think it's his name is Philip Ross, and uh, and let him know because I'm sure that they knew each other, uh, because Boogaloo. Ha, I mean. <laughs> How do you get to Boogaloo, you know, without knowing Mick? So, um, so inspiring, so uh, beyond this world, so uh, so open-minded, and just way ahead of his time. And I bet that he decided he can orchestrate humanity and our path to greatness from up there, and I bet he's going to do it. <laughs> See you there.